And I have to say, you were one of the leaders in the kind of Web3 revolution that came along. Uh, you were posting up there before a lot of people uh, were really aware of the possibilities of Web3, well before I was in the industry. And uh, I have to say, you taught me uh, quite a lot of the, the possibilities and what we could do in Web3 as game developers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of curious, you know, when, how and when did you make that transition from, you know, I guess what we call Web2 games, which is traditional, you know, mobile in-app purchase style to this more blockchain powered Web3 space? Well, I don't know that I, that I consider it as transition so much as I added a lot of capabilities to my overall toolbox, because I, I look at the whole universe of games that could exist and for certain kinds of games you need a certain kind of economy and for you know certain kinds of games a scarcity economy or economy where people trade with each other or where the composability of web3 adds adds the building blocks that we stack things together and make interesting new objects out of subcomponents all those are a few of the several reasons to to want to build a web3 game it's not obviously a, a fit for every single kind of game a single player storytelling game, for example, um, where you just go through an adventure, you don't need web three things for that. Although I'm sure that as I say that people listening to this are like, Hey, I've got a great idea for how you would add web three. Totally. Like I don't, I also am a big believer that, um, you know, first of all, there's an exception to everything in games. And and number two, like, I can't think of all the ideas that, you know, that's, that's kind of why I went to making beamables because we could help thousands of people build games instead of me have to come up with all of the ideas for the next game. But you, when we think about like the emergence of web three, it actually started around the time of Star Trek timeline. So little known fact, Star Trek actually has Web3 features in it that we're, we're still waiting to see them uh, emerge. But I we worked with, know that. Yeah, we worked with Forte four or five years ago and, mm -hmm. and generated about a million wallets um, via Star Trek timelines because we started to add some Web3 components where you could earn certain NFTs and slow drip uh, economy features that were on chain to that. Um, they're all present in the game. They haven't been rolled out yet. We'd love to see it go out there someday, but whether or not it does emerge, it taught us a lot, taught me a lot about those systems. I had, you know, mined Bitcoin and things like that even years earlier than that. So I'd always been like crypto curious and had messed yeah. around with these things and, and collected some of the currency. So it, it wasn't as if I came at it as a blockchain, blockchain noob either. Um, but we used Star Trek timelines as as this petri dish to experiment a little bit with the kinds of components that you could bring into an established Web two game. Mm -hmm. And this is a tricky thing, by the way, because if you have an established free to play economy, free to play is almost always an inflationary economy where you don't care about the fact that one individual user might end up with infinity of a currency, for example, yeah. or lots and lots of items because you have designed the game in such a way that you're the monopoly supplier of all the items. You are the form of distribution. You're the central banker. Like as the free to play game system designer, you have fulfilled all of those economic roles. Well, it gets more complicated with web three because you're opening up cases where that will no longer be the case. And one of those things you know, ideally would include the ability for players to trade items with each other, just like you can trade a Magic the Gathering card with your friends or a Pokemon card with your friends. So that opens up a whole new dynamic to the way people are going to think about their game strategy, their game tactics. It certainly has a huge impact on the game economy. So for us in this game, while these features didn't make it out, or at least haven't made it out yet, we decided that we kind of had to firewall those aspects of the economy a little bit and any yeah. of the collectible items that would be associated with the tradable economy using NFTs wouldn't really intersect in any way with the traditional free-to-play economy. So mm -hmm. they were additional features that were added to the game. So that was my first introduction to, to 
Web3 gaming. And, and it was actually about that time that I just started to see all of these gaps in you know what, all the online systems, economy, social systems, cloud code, data persistence, and then of course, blockchain integration that stood in the way of building big games. And, and that was the true transition over because that was from being a game developer of one game at a time to creating a technology platform to help everybody. Mm -hmm. And the big, the big thing that I realized in that transition from game developer to game technologist was everyone had always been building these things in silos. Yeah. And that's, and especially the back end. like while there are, are pieces of code and APIs that you can draw upon, everyone essentially creates the siloed development effort inside their own company. And that means accumulating a lot of responsibility, a lot of technical debt, and a never ending need for middleware just to wire these pieces together. And when I looked at blockchain, I just said, geez, that's going to be another exponential increase in complexity. Mm -hmm. And history has proven that true. Like so few web three games have been able to get off the ground over the last year, I think largely because people have gotten so caught up in a lot of the technology and the base infrastructure kind of things standing in the way. So uh, we're, we're helping people now get past that so that they can focus on the creative aspects, the economic aspects, the experiential aspects. Right.